Hello and welcome to the Gussets and Gerdes podcast episode 23. My name is Christina and this is my podcast about my knitting, stitching and crafting. We are now into September. It is most definitely dropped in temperature immediately actually as soon as September came around. So I've got my little jumper on and my hot chocolate in my new mug. Which I got especially for autumnal evenings crafting at home. I don't know, I just think small little things like that. Have I not got hot chocolate all over me? Anyway, let's let's jump right in. I thought I'd show you first um, my current work in progress. Um, so this is a matching top and skirt. I made this skirt a good couple of years ago for a holiday and I loved it. I did make it a tiny bit too small small and now I'm a tiny bit bigger than I was before so now it's more than a tiny bit, <laughs> tiny bit too small um, so I have just this afternoon cut off the waistband and cut a new one because I had some extra fabric and popped a new one on there are no gathers through the front and then all the way around the back there are gathers which gives a nice flat front now I did also, I did make a top already for this, but it was super, super short. Um, which didn't actually bother me so much through the front, but in the back it was only like really narrow um, where the fastenings were. So I decided that I would recut another little top, which I've drafted. It's got a kind of a sweetheart, uh, princess seam through here, sweetheart neckline. And I just used um, a pattern that I had drafted a little while ago and I will have to put an open-ended zip um, down the bottom, which I've not used an open-ended zip before, so we will see how that goes. But I loved I loved this outfit when I, when I made it and I think it's such a shame that I hadn't worn it in a long time. So I have modernised it and updated it now for my own taste. Uh, and at the time when I made this skirt, I didn't have buttonhole. Uh, I didn't have a domestic machine that did buttonholes. So they are just poppers that go all the way down and then buttons on top. Um, so the skirt is finished. I just need to put the, um, the little button on the waist. And I've got a few tiny tweaks left to do on the top. But um, I've been going through some of my old bits and pieces and just thinking how I can go about making them more wearable. So that is um, nearly done, which is really exciting. And my holiday is in three weeks. I'm going to Italy, to Turin, with two of my friends. And um, they love taking a good photo. So <laughs> I'll be able to get lots of shots, and maybe even some um, video footage of the garments that I make. But um, yeah, just making me feel good to reinvent the things that I'm making and to get more wear out of things. So there we go. That's my first piece. Um, on that note, actually, I have been working on... You will remember this jumper from previously. This is the Chuck, um, is it Chuck sweater by Andy Satterland. So I knit this in the large and I wore it all autumn winter and um, it was just really uncomfortable. I felt, not on its own actually, um, with, with like a vest underneath it would be fine. But if I put on anything with sleeves, I really struggled to put it on because it would really roll up even just the t-shirt sleeves when they were fitted, it would still ruch them up and I'd end up with this kind of fabric all around my bicep and. Anyway, what a mess that was. So I have re-knitted this in the extra large. So I've knitted one size bigger in the same yarn. At one point I was knitting the new sweater attached to the old sweater and it was just unravelling. Um, I have not soaked the yarn. I'm knitting with um, kinky yarn. And um, I have already blocked this. I blocked it because I thought I'd finished it. And then when I put it on, I really still felt that the sleeves were too tight. So the body now is perfect. Um, I did some short rows 
at the waistline just before the ribbing only in the back so I ended up with that kind of amount in the back about an inch extra and then I didn't touch the sides so I've got that like nice curve through the back which really sits comfortably in my back I'm really happy with that um, I didn't have very much yarn so I didn't do the double double rib necking folded up when you fold it over back on itself so you knit double I can't remember what that's called but anyway I didn't do that um, so it's it's lighter around the neck it did have more of a sturdiness to it before um, but once again those sleeves were too small too small and the amount of times I've pulled this out now I don't care this will be now my favourite jumper. I've decided it's going to be my, my favourite jumper and I'm going to keep re-knitting it until it fits. You can see how awful it looks knitting with kinky yarn compared to blocked. Ooh, is it going to get it? Maybe not. Okay, let's just ignore that one that's fine anyway nice and smooth not nice and smooth so um there we are um yeah so re-knitting and i just think i'm just ignoring now the the decreases for the sleeve so this side they're lined up so the armhole is the same and i've just adjusted the increases so instead of every four it's every six and I didn't decrease for the first 20 rounds so I left it nice and roomy in the top and then I then I started um then I started the decreases and I'm happy with that now so that's starting to work out seeing as um I had so little yarn I have ordered and received a Ubel. Just one more 100 gram skein just to finish off this project. Uh, I did want to do one. Yeah. So before I started knitting the extra large, I laid flat the large size and um, I measured it. Keeping in mind that it had been worn quite a lot and therefore will have stretched out a little bit. Um, compared to when it was first knit so for example on the bust I was getting a 40 inch and comparing it now to the one I've just knit which is 42 so I reckon that actually once it's been worn a little bit uh, it will it tend the yarn tends to relax I find the yarn tends to relax and get just a little bit bigger in the final garment measurement. The waist remained the same, but again, it's ribbed and it hasn't been um, stretched out at all. So that will give me some extra room. Although I wasn't really worried about the, um, worried too much about the waistline. And then um, the bicep went from 12 and a half to 14 and a half. And now I'm knitting it again, it's slightly larger. So actually it was all right here. I found it was, it was um, that part. <laughs> the forearm was just too too snug, and um, if I'm if I'm going to re knit the whole sweater, I might as well knit it so that I actually love it. So really happy with that. It's going fine. I don't even feel irritated by it actually. Generally, I would feel um, really quite upset and angry with myself, but no, I really loved it last year. I really want to wear it. I love the colour, it went with a lot of things, just wasn't super comfy, so I'm going to rectify that and make sure that it is. So, um, yay! Um, moving on to a new project, which you can see a little bit of here. I decided uh, to start a, another quilt. Haven't finished the last one quite yet. Do a few more blocks but I've really really wanted to go with my new mark <laughs> a little crafty project for the evenings that I can just tuck next to the sofa and pull it out when I'm watching 
um, TV, like um, all the Bake Off, you see, perfect, perfect Bake Off um, project. So this is English paper piecing, let me show you. Mm -hmm. So I went on a little walk in Ludlow, which is close to my little town. And we went for a walk in the woods. And afterwards, we went to a wool shop. Uh, the wool shop, 13 Broad Street, Ludlow, the wool shop. There's the details. Fantastic. Obviously, I did go there for wool, but they had some fat quarters of liberty fabrics so they are all florals i think that one was my favorite i bet although now i do really like this one anyway they are all lovely and they're a nice combination of fabrics so i picked that up obviously being liberty it's not a cheap fabric it's but it's worth every penny, in my opinion. So the idea was, oh, I also got some cream cotton from them as well. And I got two meters of the cream cotton. Um, it's not a yellowy tone, it's just an off-white, um, which is really lovely. And I thought these fabrics, I thought that I needed some solids. So as well as these, I brought these home. I then had a look on the craft, uh, the Crafty Mastermind website, which is a UK based um, fabric seller and got fat quarters of these beautiful cottons. In addition to the, uh, the blue and mustard. So I thought those fabrics along with those were just fun and um, a little bit childlike actually, a bit, I don't know, 1950s, 60s, playful, um, pops of colour. I don't know if I'll use all of these. I don't know if I would use the muted grey and um, seeing as I have the aqua, I don't know if I would use the super pale, oh gosh, the super pale mint, but um, we'll see how we go. The idea for the design is the off-white um, colour followed by a Liberty rosette, um, a colour that draws out something. So this beautiful one, it's got some lovely corn flowers, so I brought, pulled that out. And this one's um, got the mustardy um, sunflower yellow, so I thought I'd bring that out. And then I'm going to go with one more um, row around with the cream. And um, then I'll pick a colour. I'm not sure what colour. I think it's going to depend on what room, who it's for. Um, I'll pick that at the end. Pink might be nice. Um, a duck egg might be nice, just something that will then go one between. So we'll just it will slot together with just that one row um, attaching all of them. So those are the first two I've done. I what did I use to do these? Oh, I had them. So as I've never done English paper piecing, sorry, as I've done never done English paper piecing before, I um, I needed the equipment. So I know that you can use a cardboard template made from a cereal box because when I was a child that's what we did and you can use printer paper and cut out all of your hexes um, that way um, just with some normal thread for stitching etc. But I love it all. I love it all. I love using the right thing for the job. So I went on the website um, sewingquilt.co.uk I really struggled to find somewhere that stocked paper piecing, English paper piecing supplies in the UK. 
So I logged in on her website and I purchased the one and a quarter inch hexes in this is paper and um, it's quite a thick paper um, or a thin card and um, whichever whichever way and I don't need to cut them myself so that part of the job is already done for me I'll just show you it's just a piece of paper that's cut as a hexagon it's a one and a quarter inch hexagon and then as well as that which I hope that you can see I got an acrylic um, template which includes a three eighth of an inch seam allowance so that's perfect so all I did with a normal pencil I laid my acrylic on my paper drew around it and then moved it along and slotted all the pieces joining together cut them out so that was really really handy and it has also got a little hole in the middle and this outline for fussy cutting. So if you wanted to have a specific motif centered, that's really, really handy. So I definitely, I will definitely continue to use that. Um, cutting pieces of paper is not my favorite part of a hand sewing craft. So buying the paper hexes was also definitely worth it. And this one has been used once and um, it's lasted well. I may iron them before I use them a second time with a dry iron, but we'll see. And then I used glue instead of hand pasting. So I have watched quite a few videos <laughs> because of course, um, I don't have many um, crafting books that included, I did have a look in the crafting books that I have, got a couple of vintage ones and uh, I think it's called the Granny's Granny's Flower Garden is where you make these rosettes and you build the same colour in one layer all the way around. Um, but because they're vintage they had the hand base thing so instead I purchased the glue stick, Soline glue stick. what I like I remember using glue as a child and I remember buying non-branded glue sticks not Pritt stick um, which is the expensive one I remember buying the cheap one in the multi-pack which was really small because it was a, a smaller um, amount of glue and so I could get a better um, a crisper line of glue than the full size and also the branded glue I remember thinking at the time it was too strong and it was more difficult to get the paper away from the fabric but this really is perfect what I really love is that you use it as a pen because it's thin however the refills are quite expensive so as much as I love using this I may try a few of the mini glue sticks and see how much it affects because if I can use something that's cheaper and I like it just as much, then I will do that. Whereas um, if I do find that this is more enjoyable to use, I will then invest in it. So I don't know, jury's out on this. It's also really nice because it's, bl it's blue, it dries clear, but you can see immediately where you've, where you've glued. And um, it really does come out super easily. So, I mean, that was glued in there and it just pulls out, but it glues in enough that I've got a lovely, lovely crisp edge and that has not been ironed. So, yeah, I'm feeling confident in my selections. I, um, you know, already ordering the things that I needed. I did go, you know, slightly mad. So I bought some new needles. I bought the applique needles, um, the big eye number 10 from Hiroshima needle. Anyway, show you the box. 
and I very well may have been enticed purely by the packaging because who does not want a test tube with a cork stopper full of needles let's be honest how fabulous so very much enjoying <laughs> taking my needle out of there that's a lot of fun Oh, there's two more rosettes that I started. It is taking a long time. This is not a quick craft and I feel that I may do multiples to get to this stage and do a little pile and then from there um, start doing the next because this is a portable project. I, I could put all my bits in a in a project bag and get to this stage but um, the bigger ones I can't be on a train stitching that. I mean, that is then a little bit ridiculous. Considering that my seat is as wide as I am. So I like to try and be enclosed <laughs> with any crafty projects. So yeah, that, aren't they so lovely? I just, I love every time I get to do a new one, picking out the new colours and then looking at these and thinking, oh, which colour can I pick out? That is a lot of fun. I was disappointed when I was looking for tutorials that there were no um, English vloggers only because um, when I want to buy the products that people are talking about that rec they recommend they're so expensive ordering from the US or from Australia so if anyone knows of a um, of a blog or a, a vlog or podcast or something that covers English paper piecing. I do follow a few ladies on Instagram who are absolutely fantastic at what they do and I'm hugely inspired when I see all of their makes so if you have any um, anyone that you would like to bring to my attention just leave me a comment I'd be so grateful. Um, but yeah this has been so much fun it's a one and a quarter inch hexi I chose that size because I wanted them still to be delicate in a quilt. I didn't want huge, but I, I just, the small ones are maybe pushing my patience levels. <laughs> uh, the only thing I bought which I was not really that happy with was the thread. So I've been using a very fine thread from the same website, Sew and Quilt. Is it called Sew and Quilt? I can't remember. The one I mentioned earlier. So it's um, Aurifil, made in Italy. Um, those are the details. Ooh. Okay. So it's a very fine thread. It's very glossy. It's off-white, almost oatmeal-y. And it really does disappear. You cannot see my stitches, even where I've used it between two of a bright colour. You have to really get very close, and even then, you can only sometimes see a flash of colour. So I am happy with it in that respect. However, it keeps snapping, and I'm wondering. It's finer than any any thread I've ever used before. I haven't coated it in a beeswax, maybe I should be doing that, um, but where you stitch your hexes together it's running across the card and I'm wondering if that is what's breaking it, although it just breaks so easily. I mean I have to, there is no effort for me to to, to snap that so if anyone has a thread recommendation of what I should be using I would be very grateful because this as pretty as it is it's lovely I appreciate the aesthetic of a wooden spool the thread is glossy and lovely it's very fine but I keep having to re-thread more thread because that's snapped and go back and redo things and if it's snapping now once it's stitched together I don't want to sit on my quilt and it's busting open at the seams. I mean make no mistake I, I'm not going back and re-stitching these. These are staying as they are but I don't know going forward if 
if it's the best idea. I mean, it's holding together well. Not that I'm pulling that hard. <laughs> anyway, we shall see. I would love to know if you have any recommendations for that. Um, I've been putting all of my little bits in tins because, as you know, I do love a good tin. So here are some hexes that I've done. So, so sweet. They're all glued and ready to go. I quite like doing them in batches. Just because then um, when I fancy doing a bit of gluing, I've got some hexes there. When I fancy doing a bit of stitching, I've got some hexes to do that with. I don't enjoy the cutting so much of the fabric. So when I'm cutting, I do more than I want to do so that there's less for me to have to do later. So yeah, just that's been sat next to my sofa, just tucked underneath and then I can pull them out lovely oh and the last thing I would like to show you is my um, project journal so I had somebody ask if I was still doing my journal I know lots of people do start with great intentions and then um, get a bit distracted but I started my project journal some time ago when I first started my podcast I started it just before with my Christmas jumper and um, my first socks and I really enjoyed going in and after finishing a project or finishing to be honest when I order the photos I've done quite a few projects so I then have to rely on my notes and I go back in um, but did quite a few projects and I've continued with it so um, No, I still have those photos. I ordered some new photos recently. I think I was starting from here, the new ones that I ordered. Uh, I still haven't completely finished. I, I put some washi tape and a little bit of writing. Maybe I already have these ones in. Oh, these ones were definitely new. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, so these are not yet filled in, but I do quite, <laughs> I do do quite a few at once. So I've got a couple of bits and bobs in there. So these all need the writing, but a couple of weeks ago I ordered some new photos and that's what these are now. I tried putting them in some kind of an order. Oh, those are funny. I had to put those in. <laughs> And yeah, so they're just waiting to be done. And I just slip, I just slip the um, the ball bands in behind the photos. I use the little paper corners, which I buy already um, with sticky on them. And you'll see these. I haven't even stuck them in yet. So it's always a constant work in progress. This kind of thing. I really like it. Uh, the book was from Paper Chase and the colour of the pages changes. So I'm always really looking forward to um, getting to the next colour. Yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. Let me grab those. Oh dear. That's silly of me. Um, I'm not I'm not that good with journaling, if I'm honest. Um, I like having the record of the photos though. I think it's really pretty and it's very inspirational and I look back and it makes me smile. So I, it's definitely worth doing. I will sometimes draw little pictures and things which does look better. And I have found that washi tape does make a huge difference. So I went and I ordered some I'll write down below, it's a, an Etsy seller from the UK, and I ordered these lovely clear cards, which are little sets, that's my 
my particular favourite because it's got the um, the gold metallic. But they're really handy. There's not too much, so I've got enough on each one to go across two pages, which is great. And then I've got some some old. Um, very simple ones which are also quite handy so even just having the plain ones it still looks really pretty and it just gives it a little bit of depth without it it just looks really flat to me so I can just strip of that and I just feel like it frames it really beautifully I think it was the Washi Queen UK but I'll write down the details in case you were looking for something and you're UK based but like here, all I did, a little bit of washi tape here, a little bit on the corner there. And although it's not finished yet, it just, I don't know, there's a bit of, it's just more vibrant. You know, a little strip across there. So. And I use it to stick down the, um, the full band and round the edges. So it just looks great. I mean, I wish every page had got some watercolour of the, of the beautiful pattern and I've done a little sketch or something. But in reality, also, I still put washi tape on here and it looks so cute. So, anyway, I thought I would show you that because I had someone ask me um, recently if I was still doing my journal and I had just ordered a new set of photographs to put in. On that on that evening so when I got that photo I had only just ordered when I got that message I'd only just put in that order for the photos so that was like read my mind anyway that's all I have to talk about for now I will be back again soon been a pleasure talking to you and um, have a lovely day same thing